Well, it's been nearly two weeks since anti-government protests erupted across Iran and became the biggest challenge to the regime since the 2009 Green Revolution. But after 21 deaths, hundreds of arrests, social media blackouts and security in the streets, the Iranian regime seems to have by and large suppressed it. Now President Hassan Rouhani says he will push to narrow the gap between officials and the younger generation. And in those protests, there were chants of death to Rouhani and some chants that sounded like this. <laughs> Pahlavi, referring to exiled crown prince of Iran, Reza Pahlavi, the eldest son of the late Shah. Before the Islamic Revolution in 1979, his family presided over a very different kind of Iran, one with warm ties with the U.S. and Gulf states, even intelligence sharing with Israel for a time. Pahlavi has lived in exile for nearly four decades and joined us earlier from our studios in Washington. Mr. Reza Pahlavi, thank you very much for being with us right here on The Rundown. Hello, Nurit. Good to be with you again. So I want to ask you, obviously, about these protests. The regime has gone to great lengths to suppress these protests. And we seem to see in Iran headline-grabbing demonstrations about every decade or so. Why do you think that they continue to fail to bring about real change? For the simple nature of the regime. Uh, we look at them as an occupying force that has taken our country hostage and is trying to export an ideology only in interest of the regime's survival with no care whatsoever for the people and their plight. And as you can see, people today are at the point of uh, being completely uh, fed up with the system and are now questioning uh, the reason for its uh, um, still being in position of power. Um, in its totality. It's no longer a question of elections. It's no longer a question of reform. It's a question of putting an end to this regime. So how do you create change in a regime that's not actually accountable to its people in the first place? Well, obviously, uh, people have to uh, resist and uh, mount campaigns of demonstrations and civil disobedience and ultimately force the regime to retreat in a point of collapse. Naturally, uh, in such movement, and we've seen many of them uh, throughout the world that uh, ultimately ended uh, the totalitarian or authoritarian regimes that they had to face, there has been some degree of international support as well, which makes the task easier, and therefore they don't feel uh, in total isolation and uh, unhelped or uh, you know, unheeded. This is what the people of Iran today expect the world to be on their side and support them in their desire for freedom and liberty. Mr. Pallavi, we've seen footage of some of the protesters calling out your name, chanting out for you. What is your message specifically for those demonstrators? Well, it's, it's very important to realize that today's generation of young Iranians have done their due diligence and uh, in-depth research of why is it that the country today is in this shape. They have heard it from their parents, that I even heard it from revolutionaries, many of whom feel sorry about the fact that they did, in fact, uh, participate in a revolution uh, back in 1979. And today's youth remember where the country was headed, what my grandfather did, what my father did for our country's progress uh, and modernization, <coughs> secularization, and what have you. So there's a value in terms of the path our country was taking at the time before the revolution, and we should be today uh, South Korea as opposed to North Korea. And all of the opportunities that the youth seek today, freedom, liberty, opportunity to find jobs, to work, to make a living, to not be in such dire economic situation, is all pending upon a serious change of the political system that we have in the country. They are revolting against it. They agree with the message that I've been giving them all along, that we need to have a secular parliamentary democracy. And Iran is today a country that has survived the 40 years of uh, theocratic dictatorship. The last time it was seen was during the Inquisition in Europe, in the medieval times. Today we have an Islamic Inquisition going on in Iran, and people understand why it is that we cannot have true freedom and democracy as long as uh, there's a religious ideology ruling. We need a secular system where there's a clear separation of religion from state, and that's the only time Iran will be able to be back on the path of freedom and uh, progress.